As we journey through SpaceX's rich history, we are presented with pivotal moments that have shaped its trajectory. From the brink of bankruptcy to emerging as a driving force in space innovation, SpaceX's resilience in the face of adversity stands as a testament to the unwavering spirit propelling the company forward. Despite SpaceX losing Starship vehicles in two launch incidents last year, the company is now poised to make history once again with its upcoming mission. This isn't just due to their ambition, but also this flight plays a crucial role that nothing else can replace for the entire aerospace industry, specifically, and the United States as a whole. Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Why is this launch so important? How does it affect the entire aerospace industry in the United States and globally? To be honest, Starship experienced two launches where vehicles were lost in midair. This may not be enough to warrant a grand party. However, these incidents serve as valuable lessons for SpaceX to improve Starship to ensure reliable launches in the future. And the upcoming third launch is the opportunity for SpaceX to demonstrate that, to show the effort of innovation through the issues that they encountered. Through the first and second Starship launches, improvements have been made to the hardware structure of the Super Heavy booster. Most importantly, the addition of a hot staging support structure to facilitate smooth separation between the two Starship stages has been successful. Additionally, reinforcements have been made to internal components of the Super Heavy, such as partitions, arches, and reinforced tanks, as well as fuel line improvements to avoid filter blockage situations leading to loss of input pressure and oxidizer turbo pumps, which could result in engine failure and loss of vehicle capacity. The Starship has also undergone hardware revisions to enhance leak reduction and explosion prevention and improve venting operations to increase reliability. The previous plan to transition from a hydraulic steering system to a fully electric system for the Raptor engines has eliminated potential fire hazards. Through the two launches, SpaceX has gained a deeper understanding of Starship's ground support equipment, also known as Stage Zero. Significant improvements and highly effective operations have been demonstrated, such as the water-cooled flame diverter installed after the first Starship launch caused extensive damage to the launch pad. Overall, it performed well during the second launch, but thorough preparation is still required for the third launch. This including for the launch tower, chopstick, and ship quick disconnect. Hopefully, the upcoming launch will have a fitting outcome for SpaceX's efforts during this time, resembling a crystallization of the lessons learned from their mistakes. The outcome of the third launch will affirm that SpaceX's decisions to change and upgrade were correct, demonstrating the world the power of innovation and determination of a pioneering aerospace company unafraid of taking risks. The second reason that makes the launch important is the future missions that SpaceX is forced to carry out. Of course, SpaceX's short-term goals include the execution of existing Starship contracts. Most of them are related to manned flights. First of all, SpaceX already has a $2.9 billion order from NASA under the Artemis program. Project Artemis is a grandiose project to return mankind to the moon, and SpaceX plays an important role here. Two versions of Starship are planned a manned one for landing on the moon, and a tanker for refueling. With the upcoming flight, they'll need to complete the mission requested by NASA, attempting to transfer 11 tons of liquid oxygen between tanks contained within Starship. It's a first step towards the eventual goal of transferring propellant between two separate ships in space. But part of what has made orbital refueling seem hazy to outsiders is the mystery surrounding just how many launches will be needed to transport the propellant to a space tanker. Competitor Blue Origin suggested SpaceX's proposal would require 16 consecutive launches. Musk said on X that figure was extremely unlikely and it would probably fall somewhere between four and eight launches. During an Artemis teleconference with reporters, Jessica Jensen, Vice President of Operations and Customer Integration at SpaceX, estimated 10-ish after NASA Administrator Bill Nelson pressed her to provide a number. This is a priority order for SpaceX because in parallel, NASA has ordered another version of the landing vehicle for the mission Artemis V from Blue Origin. The contract amounts to $3.4 billion. Therefore, accomplishing this task and winning this competition could provide ongoing revenue for SpaceX and NASA's manned missions. The big challenge here is to get Starship certified for manned flights. According to NASA requirements, it'll require 15 various launches of Starship. 
The third reason that makes the orbital launch of Starship important is to enhance SpaceX's position in the rocket launch service market. This will create a stable income for the execution of other goals, like Mars missions. However, for this, Starship will have to demonstrate to potential customers reliability, affordability, and regular launches to become more attractive than other rockets. It's equally important for SpaceX to complete the deployment of the Starlink constellation as soon as possible to receive stable income from the space internet service. Therefore, most likely the first cargo launches of Starship will be to satisfy SpaceX's needs. Stable fulfillment of this task will show potential customers the launch capabilities of the new rocket. Another unique aspect of Starship's success is its ability to maneuver like an airplane. Imagine having a 40-minute flight to any city on the planet. Imagine having breakfast in Paris, flying to a business meeting in New York for lunch, and then from there it's to Singapore for dinner. And each flight is only 40 minutes. Thanks to the vertical landing system, such flights can become possible and even more comfortable, and the large capacity of Starship, up to 100 people, can make such flights profitable and relatively inexpensive for people. As always, astronautics goes next to military applications. Fast, efficient delivery of 100 people from the mainland to mainland, as well as cargo, is, of course, a potentially important military task, and one cannot exclude such applications as Starship as well. Next, we cannot overlook the importance of Starship for Mars missions. Elon Musk and other enthusiasts dream more of Mars missions than cheap satellite launches. As we see, Mars is an important strategic long-term goal for SpaceX. Musk has already stated that he planned to put a man on Mars and said that a $100,000 hypothetical price point for a ticket to Mars should be affordable. In this regard, Starship is an important step for a human mission to Mars. It is a large and comfortable ship for a long flight, superior in volume to the ISS. It can take on board several people and provide them with food, water, and oxygen. And finally, there are resources to put such a vehicle into orbit. But still, for a mission to Mars and life on Mars, there are several unresolved problems. The key one is radiation protection during the flight. How to solve this problem? It's still unclear. It requires additional research, perhaps in SpaceX, that's being conducted. Furthermore, if Starship achieves successful flights, it'll significantly impact the spacecraft launch service market. The reduction of launch costs from the current $2,300 per kilogram to the announced $100 could represent a groundbreaking advancement in astronautics. It would enable easier access to space travel for humans. The lower cost the flights, the more individuals can embark on space journeys as explorers, scientists, and tourists. It can also carry larger satellites. If there are no restrictions on mass and size, it'll be possible to make satellites larger with simpler layouts. Gradually, small CubeSats may be a thing of the past. Starship will be cheaper to launch large systems and more fuel for long-distance flights, all of which could make it affordable to mine materials from asteroids and possibly the moon. Additionally, Starship's large payloads will allow many satellites to be launched into space at once into different orbits and inclinations. This means that orbital constellations will be deployed extremely quickly, which will lead to an increase in the number of data services from space. As satellite launches become increasingly cost-effective, satellite maintenance may become more economical than launching new satellites, leading to a trend of repairing old ones. Starship's ability to transport large payloads at low cost will also make in-space manufacturing and resource extraction financially viable. Finally, with the diminished launch costs and augmented payload capacity facilitated by Starship, the feasibility of establishing space-based solar power stations, structures designed to capture sunlight in space and transmit energy back to Earth, could be enhanced significantly. This potential development could introduce a novel source of clean energy, aligning with a global endeavor towards sustainable energy sources. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.